Hiya, welcome back. If you've ever wondered how to splice fiber optic cables, or even what fiber optic cables are, how they work, I'm sure you've heard of it by now, then you're not alone, because um, I've also wondered that. But today we're gonna be doing that. I'm being taught by none other than Mr. Spicy Electrical himself. Oliver, what have we got here? What are we doing today? So these are some single mode fiber pigtails, and here we've got a multi-mode. Okay. And we're gonna be splicing a fiber that runs into this property to a neighboring garage. Fiber optic cable is a means of communicating, basically. It's a communications cable. And from what I can recall, tell me if I'm right here, Oliver, if that is the cable here, it's a reflective surface inside and you shine a light inside of it and then that light bounces through to get the signal through to the other side, is that correct? Yep. Okay, but that's it in theory but now we actually want to see it in practical. So we've got this site here. We've got fiber on some buildings out there, which we'll go to in a minute, and we're going to be splicing them into a rack here. So what I'll do is we'll stick up a little drawing just to explain exactly what the setup is here, just to make it make a little bit more sense. Sorry, I just uh, dropped yeah. this packet of 120 pound connectors. Thanks, so, Corey. <laughs> crud, that is the word of the week. The main issue with any fiber joint, whether it's cold or a hot fusion joint. Wait, so cold being these. Yeah. And these are those type are of, so they're a type of joint with the fiber optic cable, but they're not as good because uh, they are good, but they would never be used in like a professional environment. It's more for, you know, less mission critical stuff. Okay, cool. But a proper fusion splice is where the the splicer will join two pieces of glass fiber together. But then the light will continue reflecting through that cable. Got you. What's the cable made of? Glass. Glass. Yeah, no, I'm just asking it. For... Whether you're doing a cold joint or a hot joint, that's not really the right word, but anyway, the main thing is that you get that cut perfectly straight. Okay. So if we cleave it and the glass is not straight at the end, you'll see the light come out the end of that fiber. But if you've cut it perfectly straight, it'll be like a laser pointer. Right, okay. Okay, so this is the rack here that you're working on. So, see we've got the cables coming down there. So you can see the fiber here, this is the fiber in. And yeah. I guess maybe if I tell you from what I can understand it, from what I see, and then you can tell me if I'm wrong, maybe that's the best way to learn. From what I can tell, we've got this one coming in from outside. Basically this is like from the, garage. the feed in, yeah. And then you have um, that coming in as a trunk cable or whatever you'd call it, splitting off in all the various cores and then coming out and into there. And then this then comes out and provides network to that switch with the fiber, is that right? Yep. Perfect. So what is your plan now then? What are we gonna be splicing? So we've only spliced temporarily two cores out of this cable from our garage, but right. there's actually 12. Okay. So we actually do need to run a LAN connection for cameras in the garage. Okay. So we're going to... LAN meaning local area network. Yeah, not internet. Yeah, um, WAN. So we're going to splice another four cores, give ourselves another two spare, and then, um, yeah, we'll connect it up and you'll see it actually connect. Brilliant. Right then, let's get to it. Right, so this is your fibre splicer. Wow, look at that. that is pretty cool looking bit of kit. This is by no means the most expensive splicer on the market. So this one works with an app. Can I just say this is not an advert? <laughs> this is not sponsored. No, no, I don't even know who it's made by. <laughs> it's got a nice Chinese woman that speaks to you. Oh, that's nice. Mm. Well, I shouldn't say that, an Asian woman that speaks to us. But... It, let's be honest, it's probably Chinese, isn't it? These yeah. are actually the two camera feeds that you're seeing right now, but there's nothing in there. Should we get some splicing then? Yep. So you're doing the test cut piece here that you were talking about the calibration the calibration splice yeah okay arc calibration or something so first of all we've got a 900 micron buffer okay which is the turquoise it's kind of like the the live or neutral brown or blue okay so that's that outer sheafing for bit. want of a better comparison yeah okay then we've got what's called an ac acrylate layer so this okay. is kind of like a, a protection for the glass. So it's like a bit of a polymer type. You can see it comes off a bit like 
stringy. So it's important to do it at a 45 degree angle. Okay, so you're just, oh, I can see now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're just scratching it off. So then you've also got to make sure it doesn't stay in the tool. So you keep doing this that. This is so ridiculously hard to film with this lens. It's so tiny. Wait till you try it. It's pretty hard to do as well. But Wait, I reckon I'll do it first time. So now we've stripped back this acrylate layer. So now we're left with the cladding, which is another protection to the actual core, yeah. which is still smaller than what you see here. I mean, I think people with bad eyes aren't even going to be able to see that. If I hold it in front of there, maybe they'll be able to see it a bit clearer. But it's... That, for the human eye, that's still quite visible. But yeah, it's like, visible for me, but the core not with an absolute donkey on the camera. It's not quite visible. The core is smaller than a human hair, I believe. Okay, well, why don't I pop out a human hair and we can just check that. Do you mind if I just grab this one? Okay, just because we're not we're just going to take your word for it. Ah. Sorry. Oh, mate, <laughs> you've got some thick hairs. Yeah, you're right. It is smaller. Okay. Well, no, the core, but anyway, yeah. Science. This cut edge is, is not good. If we look at that edge under a microscope, it will be all jaggedy. Oh, dear. So we're going to cleave it. So we pop it in there. Optical module on. OK. Oh, wow. Is that not really bad to look at? No. Are you it, sure? The, I'm sure there's always signs saying warning lasers do not look yeah, at this. Yeah, but it's not really... Well, yeah, I mean, don't point it down your eye, but... The fact that we can see all this light spilling in the glass, and if you look at the projection down the edge, yeah, it's, it's quite messy. messed up. So that's because you've not cut it straight. So now this is why you need to cleave it. So this... Let me just show you what the cleaver is. So from what I can see, it's like a, it's like a little baby circular saw for cable. You've got a little cutting disc there. So that would just cut it dead straight, will it? Yeah. Uh, okay, well, let's, let's cut it, let's see. Is that cut? Oh, well, that was easy. So now you see there's no, you can't see anything coming oh, sideways. Oh, yeah, it's not spilling out now. <laughs> and the projection is brighter. Yeah, wow, that is, that is amazing. I'm still not convinced that was a very good cleave, but we'll see what the splicer says. Yeah, okay, let's do it. Identify qualified fiber. Oh, Please she's not. She doesn't sound Chinese. Let's get her to talk again. Come on, come on, sweetheart, say something. Please place the fiber and close windshield cover. Hey, I reckon she's from Birmingham, you know. Okay, so now you've stripped off that outer layer, it's a lot more fragile. And that is small enough that you could actually puncture your skin with it. And die. Yeah, possibly. So we've got the two ends here. This is just a test splice, splice, do you say? It's a calibration splice, a Calibration yeah. splice, right, okay. Yeah, it's not going to fuse the two cores together. Okay. It's just going to perform a calibration and it should then improve the actual fusion splices that we do in a minute. Fiber is oh, moving. That's a pretty calibration in process. good clean. So you can see that's the actual core. Our calibration in process. The white bit. Please wait. That's so cool. Our calibration succeed. Please restart the machine. Okay, so this is actually it now. This is the one. So this is the one that's going to be connecting from that box into the network rack. So you've got the blue and orange done, and you're explaining to me how there is a, there is kind of a standard or a system for engineers to follow. Yeah, so that both ends of the cable get spliced into a tray in the same order. So the next two colours are green and brown. So this is a piece of heat shrink or plastic tubing with a metal rod in it. I think it's steel. Basically, you need to slide that on the core before you start working on it. Okay. And then once the splice is done, although that is now one piece of glass, you've created a very weak point where it's got no protection. So this... Okay. This will protect it. Brilliant. Now you've got an alcohol wipe. Correct, yeah. So this will just remove any other residue that's left. You can actually pull on glass fibre quite hard. It has a lot of tensile strength, but no, there you go. It should squeak. Yeah, okay. All right, so it's been cleaved, it's been cleaned, and now it's going into this device here, which is the fibre splicer. Okay, so this is inside the actual splicer itself. So you've got those two rods coming out. The two spikes are what create the arc fusion. Right. So these, there's lots of little motors inside and it will push the two bits of glass so they're exactly touching each other. 
Okay. And then there will be a fusion and then it'll become one piece of glass. And you can see the little cameras in there. Okay, let's let's see this, yeah. Fiber is moving. Fiber is aligning. Yeah, one of them doesn't look great. Please recleat the left side fiber. There you go. That is amazing. So you can actually see that that is a little bit wonky, that cut. So it's going to ask you to recleave it. Yeah, it's not so much that it's wonky, it's just quite... It's just not a good end. So we're recleaved up. So now it's going to try again. I think it's going to decline the right side. Do you think? Oh, no, no. No? I'm happy. Wow, that's so cool. So that's the predicted loss of that joint. So 0 0.01 decibels. Is that good? Is that all right? Yeah, yeah. If it's like anything around that or zero, that's... Generally okay. Yeah. Open the clamps and carefully slide the protector on without breaking our joint. Right. And we're going to open the heat shrink. What? Yeah. And that is so cool. It'll just beep when it's done. So that's just heat shrinking. Give it a second. That's it. There we go. So that's now a nice heat shrunk joint. So I'm going to try and do this one myself. So we're going to strip it at 45 degrees. No, first of all, we're just going to get that outer layer off. Okay, that's that one off. And then I'm going to clean it to get that polymer off that you were talking about. No, I snapped it. Okay, I'll have to try that again. Okay, I'll take it back. It's fiddly. It is fiddly, Oliver. So you've just got to scratch the glass without taking the glass out. I think that's all that polymer off. So now an alcohol wipe. Polish that until it squeaks. Oh, I heard a squeak. Oh, I snapped it. No. Oh. I think you give me a dodgy bit of cable, Ollie. Two thousand years later. Okay, so that now looks like a clean bit of glass. Just about there. So you want the glass to be on the other black pad. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, like that's that. good. Yeah. So now can I just pop this in here? Yep. So I guess I'll wait for those motors to open. They're open. Yeah, and when you hit it shut, it will actually move it slightly. Right, there we go. So that's in. So now I need the other pigtail. Give me a uh, comment in the comments below if you've ever done this before. And give me another comment. If you enjoy this type of video, it's a bit different. It's a very different to my last video, but I can't really say I've got a theme or a subject to this channel. I just generally, if it seems interesting or I think it's educational or got some value to it, then I film it. If I don't, then I don't. So now I just need to slide this so little protector thing on. It's easier to put it first, but you've, you've done that pretty well, actually. Mate, I used to give butterflies massages just for fun. <laughs> you have no idea how sensitive these little thingies are. I love a not a fighter. Bosh. Bosh. Right, so there's a nice demonstration there of, I've cleaved this side and you can see how perfect it is and I haven't cleaved that side. That was just a nice little demo of why you need to use this tool. And this cleaver is pretty awesome as well. It's very easy. It just sits in there like that. That just pops along, that pops down, bosh. And that comes back up. So now I can lay that in there and it shouldn't have any issues. That's good. Nice. Yeah, that's that's thoroughly cooked there. <laughs> oh, it's all sticky and hot. Yeah, there we go. Consider cool. yourself spliced. Oh, well, that's easy. That's a real... Oh, mate, that is boring. I would not want to do a multi-core cable of that. No, I'm no. I'm done. I've done one. I'm like, okay, now I know how it works. I don't really want yeah. to do 100. Imagine doing that on a 96-core feeder. A 96-core feeder. Mate, do you know what I would do there? I would um, start a YouTube channel and just try and make my money from YouTube videos and not do all of these. And then I can come, mm. do a multi-core cable, film you and say it's good because it's B-roll. Yeah, anyway, should we carry on? Ollie, do you fancy some B-roll? I just find it fascinating that this fibre principle yeah. is exactly the same as, you know, transatlantic connections between countries. Like, there are some undersea cables, you'd think they'd be huge, but they're literally like 
not big. It's what, just they're the like, same diameter as that inside? Well, they've got like a steel armoring, but funnily enough, the deeper it goes under the ocean, the less protection they put on the cable. That's so interesting. And it's, it's exactly the same. I mean, it's more powerful lasers. Yeah. That's about it. Fascinating. All right, let's get this B-roll that I promised. These cutters are programmed to be the right size for stripping everything off. So that middle one strips that off. And then this one is just perfect for stripping that layer off. Wicked. So what are you doing here, Oliver? You're dressing it in. Um, so that's what we're doing here with all of these cables. The reason why we're doing that is you want to leave a nice, generous, generous amount of slack because you don't want to be wrestling with a fiber machine in there. I mean, because still, whenever I think of fiber, I think of like, make sure you eat enough fiber, otherwise you're gonna have digestional issues. But if you eat this, the fact that not many fiber engineers will tell you is that you can't actually eat this type of fiber probably give you a lot of health issues and other things. You would think that fiber will keep things flowing, it will keep internet flowing, but this type of fiber is definitely not for human consumption. So just, we'll put that as a little tagline, don't eat fiber optic cables. But the reason why we leave so much slack is because you're not gonna be balancing um, the splicing machine while you're doing all of that. Um, and then I guess also it's quite a delicate procedure if you get it wrong and you accidentally nick or cut through one of the cables then you've got loads more slack to work with. So what you do with that slack then, dress it in like so. Right, so that is spliced in, those spare cores. So what's the next step now, Oliver? Now we've just got to go to the other end. Do the same again. Which is a rack patch panel. It's a little bit quicker to be fair. Brilliant, let's go to the other end then. All right, so this is the other side. So this is the garage in the system. Um, so it would be on the drawing. So Oliver has just slid this tray forward here. This is just a normal rack mounted tray. Um, so Oliver, what have we got here? We've got so the... we've got our blue and orange fibers already spliced from the house. Okay, yeah. They then get patched through to the other property. So there's another fiber cable coming in here. Yeah. Um, but obviously we've still got those other 10 cores that aren't spliced. Great, yeah. So this is just the other end of that fiber cable. So you're gonna splice that through with the pigtails and yeah. put it into that rack. Yep. Oh, well that's straightforward now. And the splicing process, that's exactly the same. Yeah, the only difference really with this is that the splice tray is just this nice little block. So we don't have that folding cassette type yeah. set up. Okay. Well, we'll smash this out and then uh, come back to testing. See you in a moment. So we're just busy smashing on with this. Actually, probably shouldn't say smashing on with it when it's all about fibre, should be. We're just busy, delicately taking care of business. I've just got to say, I take back what I said about finding fibre boring. It is really satisfying, like super satisfying. Making sure you've got a good connection, making sure you've cleaved it right, making sure you're getting everything okay. It's, it's definitely less complicated than what I thought. But again, this is just one scenario in one situation that I'm doing. This is not really doesn't qualify it's like you can't change a plug socket and say oh well electrics is easy because that one job is easy oliver here is actually going to be running a course on data soon as soon as he gets time to do it it's going to be released so if you want to go check the um, website in my description below and you can sign up to that and it'll capture email and ping you an email when it's ready it's just enjoyable because you've got this rainbow spaghetti in here that you're just sort of very methodically able just to work your way through it you can make it look neat and tidy it, it's a very enjoyable thing. And then the machine as well, like look. I don't think I can get bored of that. Maybe you can, probably if you did like a thousand a year you'd get bored of it, but you're like a doctor of the light. Cool, so they are terminated. We ran out of pigtails, so we couldn't terminate all of these, but we've got the ones that we need to terminate in. So what's next, Oliver? So the splicer has a 
optical VFL light on it. So we've just patched that in. So Amazing. now if we go, I'll, I'll just unplug it so you can see it. Oh, that's straight to my eyeball. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I see why they had that warning sign now. Um, I'm we'll start go, playing the piano. Yeah, no, don't do that. It's dangerous. Um, we'll go to the other end okay. and just make sure that they're <laughs> continuous. Yeah, and just be careful not to shine it in your eyeball hole. Here we are, back at the other end. Uh, and would you believe it? Why don't you why don't you shine that down your eyeball, Oliver? Yeah, okay. I think that's only fair. There we go. So that's the light coming out. I guess. Do you have to test it any more than that? Uh, so we can measure it with the signal power meter which the splicer also has um, but we're not going to bother with that today no okay today is just get it on get it working for now hello can you hear me can you hear me yeah i can so do you want to flash the other one yeah perfect next one yep next one awesome mate lovely stuff Okay, so we've got a very temporary connection on here. So this is rigged up to the output of that switch. So what we're doing is linking this now over to that garage and we're gonna go quickly do a test on that. And back to the garage. I love the smell where it's just rained. That actually has a word. There's a word in the English language for that smell, the feeling after it's just rained. And that word is petriol. So not just electrical things you're learning. So we've tested um, our two core link from the house. We've okay. got a PoE switch here with two fiber ports. Brilliant. Um, and just so that we know we've got connection, we've got this. If this says um, it's connected, then we know that we're good. So. Is that your official test? No. But it's your official Friday at six o'clock test. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that completely. So this is now connected to our main core switch in the house. So we're gonna plug that into this switch. And then you should see immediately. Yep, there we go. Port 17 is flashing. So we've got fiber communication and then you see that server light and it's gone green. Brilliant. So we so. have LAN and internet access in here now and we can just dump all of our access points and cameras for external use into this switch. That now is pretty much done. Obviously there's going to be more in-depth tests and more in-depth things, but like I say, this is just a how to splice fiber, which we've kind of brushed over today. For a more detailed thing, he will be making a course soon, so go check that out. Um, right, we'll do the last couple of little finishing touches, have a tidy up, and we'll conclude then. I just realised Oliver's gone toilet and he's got his microphone on, so I'm really hoping that the editor is able to split channels and remove his poo-poo sounds from this, because uh, otherwise this is going to make for some very uncomfortable viewing. But I just wanted to quickly show you something. I've been changing my van layout around, so things have changed a little bit. It's basically just a case of how can I absolutely make the most of the space available in here, and how can I lock up anything that's super valuable. I want to lock up and make it easy to remove at night. So all of this stuff, this is more M12 kit, absolutely an M12 addict at the minute but all of this stuff just comes out with me at night so that is the benefit to using pack out is it's easy to take in I, I stash it all on my roller and it comes in with me every night because I just don't trust leaving it out and then a lot of these bits these can stay in here locked up but can we please just appreciate Milwaukee sent me this oh my gosh it's the new uh, M12 driver I thought why do they need to do an M12 driver why do they need to update it the other one was already good enough and then I and then I used it, and then I felt it. I absolutely love it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think it's quite an efficient use of space. I'll show you what I've done with the side. Because there's not really much room for material storage. But I've got like my, uh, my table there, my little temporary power solar panel there. And then I've just got loads of these drawers I store bits in. Well, I've not really fully filled them up and organized them yet. But I've been storing bits and pieces in the pack out drawers and again if I want I can just take those out and clip them into my workshop so I thought that was pretty cool. This is the only remnant of me having a camper van, this being a camper van. If you've not seen me ripping out this van you should go back to the early days of the channel um, but I love it for just a bit of paperwork or a coffee on the job site. I just want to say a massive thank you to Oliver today because he's been super busy and he's allowed me just to sort of jump in and film the fibre splicing obviously it's not completely finished but you get an idea of how fibre is spliced now it's a bit of an introduction to it again and what do I always say you don't know what you don't know until someone shows you and then you've got a whole new realm and world to explore and investigate so that's pretty cool um, all that is left now 
is to send an invoice which will take me like a couple of minutes because it's on Tradeify. I've got him set up as a customer already. So all I have to do is chili one day, pre-saved site and send. And that's my invoicing done, paperwork done. I can go home. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. If you also appreciate Oliver Letnus on the site, go follow his Instagram below.